Hello, and welcome to my craft room. My name is Laura, and I create DIY crafts for the home over at Heartfilled Spaces. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to upload the 3D paper snowflake patterns into Silhouette Studio and prepare them to cut. There are separate videos available for assembling the snowflakes and using Cricut Design Space. To access those videos, click on the links in the description below. There are also links to gain access to my free library of over 60 files, including one of these snowflakes. If you would like to access all six designs, they are available in the description below as well. Here we are in Silhouette Studio. I am working in the business edition of the software. We are getting ready to bring the paper snowflake SVG files into the software. To do this, we're gonna go up to the top menu and we're gonna click File and we're gonna choose Open. Then we're gonna select the files from wherever you save them to from the library. If you're working in Silhouette Studio Designer or Business Edition, be sure to choose the SVG version of the file. If you're working in the basic edition of Silhouette Studio, you're going to bring in the DXF file and it's going to look slightly different, but if you follow along, you should be able to figure it out. When the patterns come up on your canvas, there's actually six of them and you're going to zoom out so that you can view all six files. Today we're going to cut by line color. So to get started, once you have one of your snowflakes on your mat, you're going to go ahead and select it. And then we're going to go up here in the upper left hand corner and we're going to choose the drop down menu next to the line style. So you have the fill color to the left and just to the right of that is the line style. We're going to click the drop down menu and that's going to open our color palette. And then we're going to scroll over to the eyedropper tool. We're going to select it and we're going to come over here and we're going to actually select the blue fill color. And what that's going to do is it's going to, you can see that it happened here, it's going to change our line color from red to blue to match the color of the snowflake. And we're going to go ahead and go through each snowflake and change the line color to blue. We're going to click on the second snowflake and we're going to come up here to line style. And since we already selected that blue, it's going to be the very first color on our palette and we can just click on that. And then we're going to go ahead and repeat that step for all six snowflakes. Now that we've changed the line color for each of our snowflakes, we can go ahead and go to the send menu and actually cut by color. In this particular project, all of the score lines are set to black as the line color, so we will not need to change that. So now we can actually go over to our send menu. We're going to click on send in the upper right hand corner. And today we're going to work under the line menu under the send menu. So if you choose the send menu in the upper right hand corner, and then you'll see submenus underneath that that say simple, line, fill, and layer. We are going to choose the line panel. Once you select the line panel, you can see now that there's your blue and your black lines. And this is where those line colors really come into play and make this much easier for you. So what we can do is we're going to go ahead and choose to cut the black as a, as a kiss cut, a score line, and the blue as an actual cut. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to set up custom cut settings so that you can use them over and over again on your machine. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start with the black, which when you're working with my files, all of my score lines will be black. And so we're gonna turn this black line into a score line. And we're gonna do that by going under the material and we're going to click that drop down menu. And then we're going to go down here where it says add new material, the blue button on the bottom. And we're going to click on that button. And when you click on that button, it's going to open up the materials menu all the way at the bottom. And it's under this user defined section. And you can see here, I already have custom cut settings for 65 pound cardstock scoring and 65 pound cardstock cutting and then I also have my own personal vellum setting under here but once you click that plus button you have the option now to name a material so let's just call this for this tutorial we'll call it test and we're going to click off of it and you can see now that we've created this custom setting here just for example's sake it's called test and then down here is where you would change your 
settings to that to whatever you'd like your custom settings to be there's this legacy settings and then there's carriage one settings and if you hover over these you'll see carriage one is for the cameo four and the portrait three and the legacy settings are pretty much for every other machine because I'm working on a cameo four I'm just gonna click on the carriage one and then I'm gonna change these settings so let's say I'm gonna change this force to 16 and the speed to 6 and then and we'll do one pass and we're gonna change our blade depth to five and then if you click save it's gonna ask you do you want to save this carriage one cut settings to your legacy settings well that's gonna depend on your needs if you have an older machine or if you're using multiple machines like say you're using a cameo 4 and a cameo or even something older um, you're probably not going to want to save this in your legacy settings unless you want that cut setting across all all your machines. For me, I'm only using a Cameo 4 and I really don't use the legacy settings, but just for the sake of keeping them the same, I'm going to say yes. And now if you come over here and scroll down, you can see there's that test setting that we created with the changes that we made. Now, if you want to get rid of any of these custom user-defined settings, you just need to highlight them and click on the minus button and it'll remove that setting. So let's go, let me go ahead and show you what my settings are for scoring and for cutting. So for 65 pound cardstock scoring, I use the setting of force as a one, speed as five, passes as one. Acceleration I don't do much with, I always leave it at a one. And the blade depth for scoring, I always leave at a one because we wanna just do a very fine kiss cut on this cardstock just so that we can fold it nicely. And then we would click save. I'm not going to do that because I have already saved this setting. I'm just going to select it and then I'm going to close out of my material settings with the X up here. So now let me go over this with you again. So here we are. We're under the line setting and we're under the black color and we're under material. We're going to click on the drop down menu. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom and I'm going to choose score. And so you can see here that it changed it to 65 pound cardstock score setting, which I set up as a custom setting. So once we have the 65 pound cardstock score setting selected, and the other one is deselected, and then you'll see your settings will show up down here that you set up under your custom cut settings. So here you see, I have a blade depth of one, a force of one, one pass, and the speed is five. And so as long as the actual cut setting over here is deselected, we can go ahead and send this to our machine. Now that we're done with our score settings, we're gonna go ahead and deselect the black line, and then we're gonna select the actual cut lines, which are the blue lines that we set up earlier. We're gonna choose that drop down menu. I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom, and I'm gonna choose my custom cut setting that I've pre-set up. It's 65 pound cardstock cut setting. I'm gonna select that. And my custom cut settings for 65 pound cardstock are a blade depth of six, a force of 25, one pass, a speed of five, and I have the line segment overcut turned on. And if you click on the more button underneath that, you can see that I have increased the setting from the default, which is usually, I believe, 0.10. I increased it to 0.50, both for the start and the end. So those are my cut settings that I used for cutting this project. And I would choose save. We can go ahead and X out of the material settings now. And there you see it, 65 pound cardstock cut settings. And if you look down, here they're correct they're set to where I want them to be so now we can go ahead and send this panel to cut once we're done cutting we can go ahead and go back out to the design panel and then we can highlight this snowflake drag it off of our canvas and then highlight the next snowflake and drag it onto the canvas once we've done that we can go back to the send menu we're gonna load our 65 pound cardstock onto a light grip mat and then we're gonna load that into our machine I am working with the auto block blade on the Cameo 4 and so my blade will automatically adjust the depth to 6. But if you're working on an older machine and you do not have an auto blade, you are going to need to manually change your ratchet blade to a blade depth of 6. And then we can go ahead and walk right back through this. I always cut my score lines first. I just find that it works better. So I select the black score lines and then I choose the score setting. I double check down here on the bottom to make 
make sure that the setting looks right and then I can go ahead and click send and this is going to kiss cut my score lines and then when that's done I'm going to deselect the score line and I'm going to select the cut lines which are the blue lines and that is set to 65 pound cardstock cut setting which I have set up again down here you can see the blade depth of 6, the force of 25, one pass, speed of 5, line segment turned on. And that's it for this tutorial. I'll see you over in the assembly.